Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on one thing, single barrels. Best of all, you can try before you buy. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution so you know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and who from the industry may be coming in to visit. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers traveling mini bars that are no bigger than a small purse or toiletry bag. Best of all, they are fully customizable so you can create the perfect piece that is unique for you. If you own your own business, what a fun and unique way to promote what you do. Check them out online at thebartogo.com. That is the number two in the bar to go. If you have wholesale questions, call my friend Isabel Clark at 504-481-1297. Finally, we are sponsored by the Neely Family Distillery. NFD is a family-owned business that keeps ringing up awards in the spirits world. Head to Sparta, Kentucky to experience the family history, award-winning spirits, and meet the Neely family. Check them out online at neelyfamilydistillery.com. Now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we get an update on Buzzard's Roost from co-founder Jason Bronner. My name is Miss Becca Sue. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, as well as our special guests, Jason Bronner, Tim Swyatt, and Darren McRoy. Hey, gang. What's up? Howdy. What's going on, hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, oh. So, yeah, we're going to be talking Buzzard's Roost today. Find out what's going on. Jason has been on in a little while. Let's find out what's happening with his whiskey company. We'll get to that after the break. For right now, though, Darren said there's something he wanted to talk about. What is that, sir? So, uh, me and Steve have recently found a new favorite hangout place when we're not at the shop. What do you guys look for when you're looking for a bar or something to go hang out that's not in your house? What are some requirements for those places? Okay. Okay. So, yeah, little a place where you hang out, and it can be a bar. It doesn't have to be. Maybe you've got a favorite sandwich shop that you go to. Whatever it is, where's, where's a place where you feel comfortable going into, and why? What is the reason for that? Good I bartenders. Think- Okay, that's a good thing. It's a big thing, like friendly bar. Not, I would say friendly because I don't know if I necessarily look for right. friendly bartenders. I look for cool bartenders who will chat or talk shit right. to or at you. Hey, let, 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 and let's be open here. When we're talking about in our hometown or wherever we're at, what where we feel comfortable going. But if we're going to Kentucky and I tell everybody about this that comes in the shop, I tell them to go to Bourbon's Bistro. I mean, that's the place where I feel yeah. comfortable and I like to hang out and great bartender and Jason's there. Uh, it's 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 the place to go. So that if I lived in Louisville, that would be where you'd find me all the time. But we don't. And that's not what we're talking about today. But uh, so, Jason, you got the place, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, thank you so much. You've done uh, a great job of building a place that is what we're looking for, a place we want to go to hang out at. Yeah. Well, we're going to be in April. We'll be in our 20th year. Nice. Wow. Nice. And hey, I know the street works both ways too, because I was at the shop the other day. Darren was there too. We were both there. And there's a guy coming in and said, I was at, uh, you know, Buzzard's Roost. And uh, there's this guy there, had a long white beard, kind of like yours. And he's like, he told me to go to the ABV barrel shop. And uh, oh, yeah. so he came in and bought a couple bottles. Yeah, it was cool. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that's awesome. He, he, I remember who you're talking about. He said he, he just lived uh, not too far yeah. from him. Yeah, now, yeah. You know, I can never remember the town that you're in until I, I said, well, God damn it, I, I, it's the pig on Green Acres. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Arnold the pig. Yes. <laughs> and I still can't remember it. I can, I can remember. With, and then they had you to remember the pig. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Arnold. Arnold. Okay. Right. I get it's it. Arnold. Yeah. yeah. And I've been there, what, two, two, three yeah. times? <laughs> yeah. I think two or three at this point. Yeah. yeah. So, so Becca, again, were you, what were you looking for? I kind of interrupted you there. Uh, Cool bartenders, just uh-huh. general cool bartenders who make good drinks. Um, but if they're not good drinks, then they should at least be cool bartenders. Um, also, comfy chairs. That's a good thing. I know that's that sounds dumb, but on occasion, like, it might be a cool bar, but they have, for whatever reason, like, really shitty chairs. And you're like, God, I just, like, I get, like, my back hurts every time I want to go there and I that hang sucks. out for too long. Keep yeah, and it's it. like, like, that sucks. Like, you want it to have, like, comfy chairs. Like, that's kind of important if you're actually hanging out at that bar. 
Um, and then some. Yeah, that's, of, that's just that's just getting old. I mean, they're not going to put in lazy boys. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Like, that's true. Um, and then I would say some type of availability with food. They don't necessarily have to have food in the bar, but like if they do have bar pizzas, that's great. If like you're, it's cool to like order food to the bar if they have food in the bar. Those are all I think very important things yeah. for a hangout area. Like yeah, you need to get food if you're yeah. getting drunk. Yeah. Tim, how about you? Favorite uh, place? I would say I, I. I normally, if I'm doing, I'm coming with family or something like that. But I do like to go to establishments where I know that I, I know I'm going to go back to. Are they're going to be my place for on the, on the list for a while? Is when I go there early, like at four o'clock or right at opening time, and you you sit there. You, there are people already in there, and if you you walk in, I usually get to some places that you, know, you kind of sit down. Nobody welcomes you in there. You just kind of sit. Everybody's trying to open up, but you're at the opening. I get that. But there's those places where those those old standbys, the, the the regulars will say, "Hey, who are you? Come on over, sit with us. Mm. Why are you here?" Yes, that yes. to me is the trigger of okay, this is an interesting joint. Let me, we're going to spend more money here. We're going to spend some time here. That's yes. a tell for me. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was going to say too. And we, Darren and I, well, I've been uh, just on my own. I've been going to Perennial now for it's kind of like our nightcap. Like the the wife and I'll go out and we'll get dinner. And then we like, let's stop one more place and get a, the, the traditional nightcap and, you know, final, uh, final, yeah, the mm -hmm. final, final. So we go to the perennial and uh, I've been trying to just work through their beer menu and it's always changing. So even I haven't been going there that long and there, it's always, even new beers are being added. Yep. So it's, it's like, uh, it's just like a fun adventure going in and trying that. And we just, you always get one and, uh, and then she doesn't like beer. So she gets some sort of frozen drink or something like that. But it's, it's amazing too. A couple things that, that set it apart and why it, first of all, it's comfortable chairs, like Becca said at the bar, it's comfortable in there. Uh, the, there are, the, the bartender engages you with everybody at the bar so you're mm -hmm. talking to your you're talking to your spouse or whoever you came with your friends or whatever and then you're talking with the other people as well that like the whole place is being worked that's a that's a cool fun component of it and then you know just to be remembered so we walk in well, and the bartender's like oh nightcap and they're like yep <laughs> and, you know the first couple times we went in there he's like oh you we want to keep that open or close now he knows so he just gets in i give him the credit card he get, it swipes it gives it back and spins the thing around and uh the wife always gets the frozen drink he used to ask you know do you get uh, whipped cream on there of course she wants the whipped cream he doesn't even ask anymore. He's just, you know, gets, gets that, the drink with whipped cream. That is the best oh, when they remember you. Right. Some, yeah. like, to a point, like, maybe, maybe you're not there all the time. Like, there was a place in the airport, because I was flying a ton for a little while, and in the CVG airport, there was a bartender there, Greg, and Royce wouldn't, ever Royce was with me, I was flying. I'm like, oh, let's see if Greg's working. He's like, how the fuck do you even <laughs> know? And I'm like, hey, Greg. He's like, oh, hey, how are you guys doing? How's the house coming? And I'm like, it's good. And Royce is like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't, I just like, I'd go in there and I'd see Greg working. So I'd go sit down and chat with Greg. Yeah. <laughs> he worked at the Outback. Yeah, you feel good bartender. Yeah. And it's like, and the airport's like the weirdest spot for them to like kind of remember you. And like, I don't know that they always do, like sometimes they do, but it's like, it just was nice when some, when they, at least remember your face. I'm not saying they're always going to remember your, your order, but when they're just like, oh, hey, you're back. How's it going? Yeah. yeah. They don't even have to remember your name. If they were, oh, hey, you've been in here before. Exactly. Is awesome right. stuff. It let's, just let's feels nice when yeah. they at least somewhat remember you. Yeah. Dudes are going to remember nice looking women walking into the bar. All right, Becca, you got that going for you. Not always. No See, sometimes no. people don't remember. I actually do get really weirded out when someone doesn't remember me and I've met them a few times. And they're like, have we met? And I'm like, I'm not saying that like I'm like, like I do have a look about. So like, it, it's strange if like they don't remember, you know, like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that was true. It's somebody who's not good at their job and not paying attention. That's what that's yeah. like. Not like necessarily somebody, that what, you know, what it is. Yeah, some yeah. like boring white dude who all looks the same. Like those guys. Like, sorry, we can't always remember you guys. Yeah. If you're on a Friday traveling in khakis, brown shoes, brown belt, white collared shirt, and blue blazer with the gold buttons. We, that's who we're talking about. There's yeah. your, there's your, there's your typical guy in the airport flying back on business casual. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't be that guy. Impossible to remember. Don't get upset yeah. when you're not remembered. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. It's it's great when you can go into place. It's it's just gotta have a good vibe to it. Right. And I yeah. don't know if, it, you know, a little too much places around here that I frequent a lot. It's like, you want the usual? <laughs> <laughs> and then if you go into, you have a meeting with somebody different, you know, or something, and you go in and you go to sit down and it, 
you know, the beer's already sitting there like, oh, you before there's any words mentioned at right. all, I actually right. had a, a yes. meeting at the Frankfurt Avenue liquor store with one uh, a, a guy and, and we bought, walked in and we we're sitting at the bar and I mean, my beer was sitting right there and he's like, what could I get you? You know, and he's like, <laughs> I love here. there was no words, you know, nothing. That's amazing. They just saw yes. me pull up, I guess, outside and it was, it was in. So, I mean, yeah, that goes a long way, I think. But uh, also, like you said, it's just got to have a cool vibe. You know, mm -hmm. I can, you can be the friendliest bartender in, in, in the world and, and they know you and stuff like that. But, you know, it, the place has got to be, you know, it's got to have a vibe to it. You know, you don't want to sit in some uncomfortable place. Like it drives me crazy when when the lighting in any of the places is too high. I hate uh, and it, oh, and, and it really bothers me if there's no background music. Like if you're just sitting there and there's some <laughs> other people sitting there and there's nothing playing, nothing going oh. on. Yeah. It just. That's the worst. Me. It's like, I got to get the hell out of here. It's like being a, you know, like some kind of or water library or something. Yeah. You're, you just, you're like prison almost. Yeah. Yes. So it's got to have a certain vibe to it. And, and then the, the rest is, you know, is lane yap or, you know, icing on the cake when they remember you and all of that. So, right. Right. Yeah. The bright lights. Oh, oh my God. God. Just I'm fucking gonna, just kill me. I don't yeah. want to be in a place. Fluorescent lights. Get me I'm the hell out of there. Place and they would be not dimmed at all. Like every light's on a dimmer everywhere that I have. And it's right. like, it looks like a goddamn cafeteria in here. What do you, you know? The staff is just standing around. I'm like, what the hell are y'all doing? Mm -hmm. Turn these goddamn the lights down. Turn sick. the music up and let's get to busy. Hell, Bourbon's Bistro, you almost have to feel around just to get through, which is probably why Jason likes it like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, Darren, you asked the question. What uh, what are you looking for in a place? So I, I agree with a lot with what was said, but I, I thought of a couple that weren't mentioned. I love a place with a good patio. I think, especially on a nice spring or fall day, that is the place to be. And like, I, I think that's awesome. And I think being able to account for several different sizes of groups when you go into one of these places. That's uh, one thing I've really noticed about Perennial. They're really good about... They have big booths. They have just single two people seats. Like there is plenty of seating options, and you mm -hmm. can sit with whatever size group you come with. Which right. and then in places with big groups of people, and they're like, yeah, you can have that one table over there. It's like there's thirteen of us, and so that that's good. But uh, I think what it comes down to in the end is the people, either the people working or the other regulars there. Like Tim was kind of talking about, if the regulars are cool. The place is going to be cool. Like, yeah. you don't have a place with that with cool regulars that's not cool. Those two things yeah. don't coexist. So, yeah, I, I think that's a big part of it. Yep. Like, there you go. It also can't stink. No, floors can't. And I stink. know, I know you guys know what I'm talking about. There's some bars that you go in there, and There's maybe not everyone has a good nose, but I can smell like mildew and like rotten beer. Mm -hmm. Like, cra like I can smell it the second I walk into a place. And I know not everyone's nose is like right. great, so they not everyone smells it. But like I walk into a place and I'm like, oh god, oh no! I know this ice machine hasn't been cleaned out in mm -hmm. years because I can smell that ice machine hasn't been cleaned out. Like you can smell it. Like and right. like and they wipe down tables and the and the fucking washcloth hasn't Smells, like yeah. they like they haven't been like like you can reuse your your washcloth a few times. Mm -hmm. But you can tell it's been sitting on like a sink for the like a full week because mm -hmm. it just smells like mildew. And then they come to wipe down your table and you're like, oh, God, now the fucking table smells like fucking mildew. And like that, it doesn't matter how fucking cool it is in there. Like, and, and like there's different degrees of like clean and dirty too. Like I've been in some really nasty places that still have some sort of like cleanliness about them. Mm -hmm. But that fucking mildew, rotten beer smell. Oh, God. I can't get past that. <laughs> the beer I, can't, I can't do it. Beer beer nats. Nats. It's got me crazy. It's, it, it, God, that, that mildew smell, though, man. And not everyone Finger smells lines. it. See, huh? when, when I That's the problem with the, having a good palate. It, <laughs> well, it, there's, there's, there's some punishments burden. there that come yeah. with it, too, man. When I first started at working in that uh, that dive hole or that uh, that dive bar that I was in, Steve, yeah, back yeah. in like uh, twenty seventeen, whatever year that was, right? Like the first thing I did when I got there was 
scrub out and clean out the fucking pipes that were coming out of the fucking ice like box because I could I was like there is mold in here <laughs> and there was like I finally like I got there early at work and I was like I'm just like dumping down hot water and I'm like pouring down all this stuff I'm trying to get water down there and I'm getting all, like clumps out of the bottom of it because I could oh. smell it like I knew that there was mold and then I'm like does this thing come off and I'm like yanking off like where the <laughs> ice gun like hooked up to it on like the side and I'm like no <laughs> one has fucking moved this thing in years and I get that moved down I get that all cleaned out and I'm like I know our fucking ice. I know no one's cleaned this ice maker. And sure enough, I go back there and I'm like, clean the fucking ice maker. And I'm like, nobody's touched this in so long. And not to brag, but I made that place stop fucking stinking like mold at least. That was a lot. If I did anything there, there you go. I at least got the fucking mold. That's your legacy, that though. That's it your is. Legacy. Well, for the little while I work, I'm sure it reeks like mold now, but. Sure, it's back, but. Yeah, but god damn. They what? talk about that time when uh, when they were out. <laughs> when it didn't stink for yeah. four yeah. months. Yeah. On that note, it's time to drink. We'll start with Becca. Becca, what do you got today? Oh, I've got some Buzzard Drew sipping whiskey. Okay. Uh, this is a very small batch of the straight rye whiskey. Okay. Let's see here. Stuff set up. All right. Oh, solid, solid. Yeah. Wow. That was really good. Yeah, yeah, not bad. I had it hidden in the back, Steve, where you couldn't find it. <laughs> I'd have popped that one for sure. Yeah. Darren, what do you got? Uh, I did not follow the theme of the show. Uh, <laughs> I just didn't think about it. But I have some Hidden Barn Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey finished in Madeira casks. Okay. Becca's got the lead. I'll go next. I've got uh, Buzzard's Roost. Uh, this is the ABV Barrel Shop pick. So, no. Yeah. See what we got here. No, nothing, nothing really going on there. Becca has the lead. Only two to go. We'll go with Tim first. I just get me out of the way. I got an OG bottle of Buzzards Roost. This is a barrel strength rye at one fifteen point two, signed by the Jason Bronner in twenty twenty. Right. Back in twenty twenty. OG. COVID times. COVID times. That's right. No. Ooh, boy, Watch that, that was close. You pop that top and just spreads COVID everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Last but not least is Jason. We'll see if he can win this thing. I'm going old school as well. I've got the archives and got the peated barrel oh, out. My favorite. That one went away because nobody wants to buy anything that says peated on it. Except for Swire. And me. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, Becca God. wins. Becca wins. The At least I roost. won with Buzzard's Roost. Cheers, gang. Cheers. Cheers. All right. We'll take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to be talking about Buzzer's Roost. We're going to get an update from the man himself, Jason Bronner. We'll do that in just a few. Okay, let's talk about the people that make these shows happen. First up is the Stave and Thief Society. Via their in-person class at Moonshine University in Louisville, Kentucky, the Stave and Thief Society is the place where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge an executive bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staveandthief.com. Speaking of Executive Bourbon Steward Certification, the ABV Barrel Shop in St. Louis, Missouri has developed a unique partnership with the Stave and Thief Society to offer a preparatory class to assist you in getting your Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. This prep class costs only $25 and is available to take live or online via Zoom. Graduates of our class receive a coupon code good for 15% off your Executive Bourbon Steward Certification held in Louisville, Kentucky. This saves you almost $90. Additionally, you can collaborate with fellow attendees to split travel costs when you go to Louisville. If you're interested in signing up for the class, simply head over to abvbarrelshop.com and check out the classes and events page. Last but not least, we are sponsored by Neely Family Distillery. Royce Neely is the 11th generation distiller and one of America's oldest distilling families. A visit to Neely Family Distillery takes you through family history, where you can see all the artifacts and newspaper clippings through the years, 
from this family that started distilling in America after James Neely arrived from Northern Ireland in 1740. Today, Royce Neely and his team are crafting some of the best spirits in America. Their bourbon and absinthe offerings keep winning top honors in the spirits competitions. Recently, their absinthe made history as the first platinum winner in the absinthe category at the San Francisco Spirits Competition. Neely Family Distillery is definitely a bucket list destination if you are a bourbon fan. Learn more about their spirit offerings, visiting their facility, and the awards they have collected over at neelyfamilydistillery.com. And now, back to the show. Hi, this is Rick Brenner, and you are listening to the Bourbon Daily. Shouldn't it be the legend? Yeah, maybe. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Uh, today, we're talking to Jason Browner about Buzzard's Roost. Yes, we are. Jason, what's going on with uh, Buzzard's Roost? Well, I'm busier than a chicken with one leg. Okay. Been doing a lot of traveling, uh, doing, you know, a lot of podcasts and things, uh, working down at the distillery. It, Man, you know, they want 60 minutes out of every hour out of me. <laughs> uh-huh. So uh, yeah. everything's been going well. You know, we're opening a couple of states here and there, a couple more states uh, here and there. The distillery's uh, getting busier by the day. A lot of people are finding out we're down there, and um, uh, that's really doing well. Our tasting room's doing well. We are we have put down some of our own whiskey out of that place, out of Buzz that's gonna be Aldrin. fun. That's gonna be fun, Looking right? Forward to that. Yeah, that's we, gotta be great. We put down fifty barrels on uh, Valentine's Day, which was pretty sweet. Yeah, and then uh, you know we're we're making about a barrel and a half, or about a barrel every two days down there. Okay. So man, it's just uh, going crazy. We've uh, somehow had a avalanche of a bunch of awards that came in all at one time. Yeah. I've been joking uh, about that at the shop every time. Like, uh, Steve, Buzzard's Roost just won another award. Buzzard's Roost just won another award. I, I think I've said it every day for the last week. Right. Yeah. Or we, uh, let me see, I've had to read some of them here. We've got the best bourbon from the Barley Corn Awards in yeah. spring of 2024. I took your mailing, hung it on the wall, and then. Ha- and put it where it extended down and uh and then drew an arrow from number one and then all the way down where it sits on the shelf and pointed to it there's an arrow that runs from the number one to that it's marketing I told Darren, there. If I'm not here only stock that product right there on the, on the shelf yeah and then our uh toasted bourbon got so barley corn the that was the best bourbon mm-hmm. the toasted Bourbon got a double gold in that. And then in the international whiskey competition, which was really it's the first year we've done that. And it's a double blind. And I just pulled three bottles off the shelf. And all three of our bottles scored within uh, the top 50 of about 350 worldwide whiskeys. That's cool. Wow. And when you read the list of who's ahead of us, like we got the best uh, best rye in the world. Our bottled and bond came in second, right behind 1792. Right. Uh, and then the American whiskey uh, scored right there uh, with the uh, with the uh, bottled and bond. I mean, they were a couple of points off. And like I said, that it's a blind sleeper product. Mm-hmm. It's a blind uh, double blind tasting, and it's it's a point system. Uh, but all the whiskeys that are ahead of us, when you look at the list, if you it, it's the international whiskey competition, if you go look at the list, uh, you know, we're going up against 30 year old scotches, 21 year old scotches, 27 year old scotches, <laughs> and they're all ahead of us. And, and the guy that runs the show, he's like, you know, all these guys are sending ringers, right? You know, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're blending special shit just to go for this thing. And I'm like, well, I pulled three bottles off the shelf and, <laughs> you, so, uh, you know a lot of those things that are ahead of us in that thing aren't available or or something ridiculous so i i felt that one for me we really did really well just to see who we were up against right um so it, that's that that's some real bright news for me i mean that that's that was great we won we brought some from the 
New Orleans, not the Bourbon Fest, but just New Orleans uh, whiskey tasting, I guess. Right. Uh, San Francisco, we did well again. And then whiskey, or is it uh, not what was Wine Spectator? I think Wine Spectator. Yeah, Wine Spectator. We've got a 94 with one of them and a 93 with another one. Nice. In that one. So. Um, can can I ask you a couple questions about uh, the uh, Instagram page Coming Whiskey? Some people like that page and some don't. So can I ask you about it? that? Uh, the Instagram page Coming Whiskey, because there's you've got a couple products on there, and I don't know what they are. Can I ask about those, or would you prefer I don't? Because he just grabs the stuff off TTB, and some sometimes companies aren't wanting to talk about it yet, uh, and I won't. So I won't ask you about it if. You know, oh, I don't too. care. Okay. I'll leave uh, the answer. I don't know. I might founders, not know anything about it. Founder 7. What is Founder 7? Oh, well, okay. That's cool. So those things just got. <laughs> See, it's, it's out there. Yeah. 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 Those things just got to the distillery. So we're putting those out. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a seven year that we really liked. It had been in our barrels for over a year, if not longer. Um, wow. We had a seven year that came out we dropped that with i guess you were going to ask about the 11 year yes that's coming next yes yeah. yeah um yeah these two we just couldn't pass up and they've been sitting in our barrels for a while and i just tasted them the other day again you know after they'd been bottled and uh they really turned out well yeah so that'll be distillery release only i think uh it may go to Kentucky. I'm not sure how much we have of it. It's, it, it's not a lot. So um, it may be available online, maybe online and at the distillery. But we're going to kind of stagger it. We'll, we'll release it online after we just release both of those at the distillery. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they're actually getting released uh, in a week or so. Okay. okay. So I'm not sure when the show is. So no, uh, no into distribution for either of those. Those are distillery only things yeah i'm almost positive okay okay just just checking so yeah i thought that thought that was interesting because i didn't know anything about those two and, and then the first time i saw them popped up on there so i was like huh yeah there's a it, i've got so much going on i don't know which, whether i'm going or coming so <laughs> right which is good so those seem like some distiller only limited releases and i know you buzzer juice has a great cycle of things to rotate through do you know what's coming up next for the limited releases that you do oh i think we're doing some uh i think we've got some french oak coming out that's okay. down and we're going to do some more of the smoked which is repeated but we don't tell anybody it's the smoked right and i think that's <laughs> smoke out. tobacco yeah the good smoke the, um, good, the good kind of smoke okay the I don't know the bottled and bond really went over very well. Mm -hmm. That's been out for maybe a month or two, and that's our only weeded uh, product that we do. And so I think it's forty five percent wheat. Yeah, yeah. And it it uh, it is there. People are loving it. You know, I yeah. was I, I don't know. Fantastic. I was I was always been kind of a at least a rye bourbon guy. Um, right. But I you know the weeded really uh, people are really taken to it. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Our only bottled and bond and our only weeded product. Okay, okay, fair enough. What else do you guys want to know about uh, what's happening? Anything? I'd say the uh, the classes that you hold at the uh, Buzzards Roots Experience in downtown Louisville. The, I was uh, able to take a group down there, and we did the chocolate pairing with uh, the Buzzard Roots products. And uh, I don't know if you want to talk about some of the folks you have teaching over there for that, because that was – who was teaching that class to me was I was like wow are you kidding me um, that was a hell of an experience uh, with that professional and it was a, a very uh, hell of a surprise and uh, and as folks understood and did a little research they're coming back from dinner like oh my god that that was a hall of famer there too as well oh, yeah. pulling together a hell of a group over there so I hope you want to talk about some of the experiences that you have at the uh, at the, uh, the experience. Yeah, well, uh, Susan Riegler does a lot of our our. Uh, she kind of writes the writes the uh, scripts down there and does the research, and then she will uh, teach our staff how to run it. And our staff, I didn't know really who you were talking about at first until you said 
Hall of Fame, Hall you know, Famer, yep. and, and, and I, I said, well, that's got to be Susan. But yep. yeah, she's down there, and um, we we get her part time, and she she's uh, writing kind of the 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 script and all the the material for these classes, and uh, the classes are really really interesting. And they're easy to learn, especially that chocolate class is a great one. That was a great one. I took that one too. Awesome. Last We've got time. a wood, you know, a wood class that talks about, you know, how we specialize all of our barrels and the 17 proprietary barrels that we use. And um, so the wood class is really cool. The chocolate class is cool. And, you know, we'll do a cocktail class. We've got a prohibition kind of a little tour. We built a speakeasy down there. I don't know. Uh, Steve, when was the last time you were down there? I don't know if they were working on that. Or yeah, something. I was just there a month ago. So yes, yeah, was, you weren't there that day, but uh, yeah, we took the class with Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy, oh yeah, Jimmy James, class. sure, Jimmy James, yeah, yeah. Just took the chocolate class with him. He's awesome, by the way. But the and, speakeasy uh, yeah. experience is really cool. You get a prohibition style cocktail. You actually get to say taste some of our white dog. Uh, hopefully, that's going to hit the shelves. Be distillery only. Uh, we're waiting on labels for that. that we're going to sell our white dog that we pull off of the Buzz Cauldron down there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you get to, you know, you learn a lot about prohibition and 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 drink a couple sips of whiskey and just kind of relax in a real cool atmosphere. So, Jason, I've got a question. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. This is kind of actually, it's mostly just funny. Um, I think this was at... It might have been last year at the Bourbon Festival, or is that some other like event type thing? Um, someone came up to me and said, "Oh, well, we already met one of the Neelys, and so we were talking about doing a barrel pick." And, and they start like kind of talking. And I go, "I'm like, oh, who did you? So who did you meet?" And they're like, "Oh, he works at Buzzard's Roost." And I said, "Who did you meet?" <laughs> they're like, "He's one of the owners." And I'm like, "Who did you meet?" <laughs> And they're like, ah, oh, he told, he was like talking about you guys. And I'm like, I'm just letting you know that <laughs> none of the owners work at Buzzer Drews. Um, and I can say that for sure because I'm married to the owner. And my <laughs> father in law is the other owner. And my mother in law is the other owner. And none of them would have been at Buzzer Drews. And they're like, he was like a younger kid. And I was like, okay, well, I don't know who that is, and I don't know who you spoke to. Um, but do you have any Neelys working at, <laughs> at Buzzards? I, well, Ethan, Ethan gets confused as a Neely. I think it was Ethan, but yeah, gets, I, and I think he that he just said, go to Neely, and like, I, I don't even know, but I think it must have been Ethan. It's a weird <laughs> thing. He talked about that. But yeah. these people were like, just so, and I think, I don't remember, I must have been so, just an, like, an event I was pouring at or something, because they were so, speaking to me like I was just a nobody, and I was like, listen. <laughs> here's where, I, I now that you say all of that, I put it together. So Ethan, our distiller, is his grandfather is Steve Nally. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that's probably oh. where he said oh he's a nally sounds right and right. It turned into neely from drinking and from there from walking here to there your our booth to your booth over there well these people were just like really re it might it could have been at new orleans maybe oh yeah actually it's maybe where it might have happened at and they were like well we met like the one of the neelys <laughs> yeah, he's, and they were just telling me about how they're going to come do a barrel pick and all this and I'm like I'm the barrel coordinator <laughs> <laughs> he is actually Ethan Spaulding but obviously his granddad Steve Nally uh, yeah you know distiller fame and I think that's probably where the where the changes where the communication got crossed there the Neely Nally connection yeah yeah there you go there you that go. makes more sense yeah. it does well, Jason, glad to hear things are going well there and uh, continued success. We love selling it at the ABV Barrel Shop. Anytime you're in St. Louis, we carry everything. We'll always carry everything Buzzard's Roost sells. That's, Thanks, that's uh, That is what we do there. Uh, the, so if you're looking for a product and they've got it, it's approved in the state of Missouri, we will carry it. That's Well, that's I send uh, people that way from the pig in Green Acres. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, we appreciate that. They find us. Uh, yeah. That's enough. That's enough of a clue for them to find us. So there you <laughs> go. We appreciate that. So we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Darren, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram at the Bourbon Adventures. Tim, uh, you can find me on Instagram being an ambassador for Buzzards Roost, uh, as well as on our flagship whiskey on YouTube. Nice, uh, Jason. I am Instagram with the Bluegrass Bourbon Baron, and uh, Buzzard Roost is on all the platforms as well as Bourbon's Bistro. All right, Miss Becca Sue. You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Miss Becca Sue One K No C's. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website. That thing's going to be abvnetwork.com. Check that one out. Everything that we do is out there. Also, come by and see us, the ABV Barrel Shop. We talked about it already. We've got the full lines of uh, Buzzer Drews. We've also got all Neely stuff, so we've got uh, a great place to go in. All kinds of barrel picks, 50-plus at any given moment, so come by and check us out, abvbarrelshop.com. Miss Becca Sue, anything else to say before we get out of here? I'd just like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. If you like what we're doing, we ask you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash the ABV Network. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. See you, Bye, y'all. Bye now. Peace. Before we let you go, let's talk about one last thing. The ABV Barrel Shop in the St. Louis community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on a couple of things. First of all, single barrels. We are the place where single barrels live. We go to distilleries, taste through the whiskey, select the best barrel, and have it shipped to our store where we present it to you, our customers, by allowing you to try before you buy. We're also known for the classes that we have in our education center in the store, as well as the events we have with industry professionals from the bourbon business. If you are in the St. Louis area, please come by and visit us at 6 Fox Valley Center in Arnold, Missouri. Or at a minimum, at least sign up for our email and text distribution so you know exactly what's going on in our shop over at abvbarrelshop.com. This is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, signing off. We thank you for listening to our programming and truly appreciate your support. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.